my granny's Abner. I believe that's our ring. Ha. Ah. The Lum and Abner Show. We bring you a brand new kind of visit with those old characters down in Pine Ridge. Featuring Clarence Hartzell as Ben Withers, Herb Vigran, Francis X. Bushman, Herbert Rawlinson, the music of Felix Mills, and starring your old favorites, Lum and Abner. And now, as we look in on the little community of Pine Ridge today, we find Lum and Abner in their Jotham Down store discussing a business matter with a man from the county tax collector's office. Listen. Well, that's it. Your taxes are delinquent, and if you don't pay us the $72 by 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, the Jotham Down store will be sold to the highest bidder. Now, what have you got to say to that? (laughs) Ah. You don't want to lose your store over a little matter of money, do you? Well, uh, it ain't so much the money that's bothering us. It's trying to raise it. (laughs) Well, just remember, you've got 24 hours. Is that daylight saving time? It's any time, and that's final. Goodbye. Granny's now where can we get our hands on $72? Well, now... uh... Some good, honest way. Oh. (laughs) That lets my idea out. Our biggest stumbling block is we're broke. Yeah. I reckon we ought to have saved our money during the Depression so we'd have enough money now to live through this prosperity (laughs) life. Well, we've got to get it some way. First, I'll go to my friends. Well, that won't take long. (laughs) Then I'll go to the bank, and then I'll try the county treasurer. He ought to loan us the money as long as he's going to get it back. Well, of course, we can always go to Squire Skimp. Abner, I wouldn't go to Squire Skimp if he was the last man on earth. And I was with him. Yeah, that's what I want, Squire, alone. Well, I'm glad you came to me, Lom, instead of going to some unscrupulous out-of-town loan shore. Yeah, I'd rather do business with the local ones. Yes. Uh, you say you want $72, Lom? Yeah. Well, I think that can be arranged satisfactorily, uh... Excuse me a minute, Lum, while I contact one of my uh, financial associates. Couldn't you just give me the $72 now? Uh, Just a moment now, Lum. Hello, Joe. I need a little cash. Uh, How'd we do in the third? (laughs) (laughs) Left at the post, huh? Uh, What about Lady Hayburner? Scratched, huh? What'd you have, two on her nose? Is something wrong, Squire? Uh, no, 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 Alum. Uh, just one of my clients, uh, Lady Hayes Bernard, uh, turned left into a post and got scratched up a little, so... <laughs> well, what was that about putting two on her nose? Uh, uh, well, uh, oh, well, she got scratched, Alum, on her nose. They put uh, two band-aids on there instead of one. <laughs> Must have been a bad scratch. It was practically disastrous. Uh, hello, Joe. Uh, how about that long shot in the seven? Twenty-nine to one. Oh, it must be later than that. Well, uh... <laughs> send the money over right away, Joe. I'm parlaying it on a sure thing here in my office. Yes, sir. Goodbye, Joe. Uh, Lom, now, while we're waiting for my associate to deliver the money, we'll fill out this loan form. Uh, care for a cigar? No, thanks. Let's see. Name, address, chew tobacco, Lom? No, thanks. Uh, collateral? No, thanks. Lom. <laughs> I mean, do you have any collateral put up for this loan? Something worth $72. Well, we've just got the store. Well, I'd be willing to stretch a point. I'll just put the store down here. Well, wait a minute. Now, as for interest, Lum, uh, generally I charge simple interest. But in your case, I'll uh, make it compound. Now, don't let me take advantage of you just because I'm a friend, Squire. Uh, see, now, uh, break $72 down into 10 payments. That's $7.20 plus 6 cents, $7.24, $32. Uh, yeah, I don't own a seven twenty. That makes eleven dollars and fifty two cent payments, Lum. Well now, Squire, you've got to live too. Yeah, well, I'll scrape through some. <laughs> now, maybe instead of making just ten payments, you'd rather spread that out over a period of say oh uh, twenty four months. Yeah, yeah, spread it out. All right. That'll be twenty four payments of eleven dollars and fifty two cents. <laughs> Of course, now, maybe you'd rather get it over with than pay it off in a lump sum. Yeah, yeah, better lump it. 
All right. The lump, that's uh, 24 point payments, uh, come to uh, $276.48. And is that's awful lumpy. <laughs> Add in the original $72 aboard plus $2 surtax. Surtax? Well, you're not a lady, Lom. <laughs> uh, that comes to $350.48. Well, now, wait a minute, Scrub. And if you pay it before midnight, we'll knock off the 48 cents. $350.48. Dogies looks to me like we're worse off than we was before. Yeah, it does look that way, don't it? On the surface. Now, if we don't dig up the money, we'll lose the store long. There ought to be somebody that ain't got no more sense than to lend us that much money. Yeah, let me say that. Oh, well, Ben Withers, we was just talking about you. How's that, Abner? I said we were... Uh, ben... <laughs> I'm going to be frank with you, Ben. We need $350, quick. Well, I'm the only man I know has got that kind of money as Balmer K. Sutter of Mount Eight, millionaire banker, worth several thousand dollars. <laughs> well, do you reckon he'd actually lend me some money? Uh, no. Uh-huh. You're an unmarried bachelor, Lom, and Balmer K. Sutter will only do uh. business with settled-down, happy family men. He distrusts bachelors. But why? Why? Right. Volmer K. Sutter had a rather unfortunate experience with a bachelor once. The bachelor ran away with his wife. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's a shame. He brought her back in two weeks. Mr. Sutter's never trusted a bachelor since. <laughs> well, I don't blame him. Well, Abner's a tied down, or er, settled down family man. Maybe he can get the loan. Well, why don't I jump on the long distance phone and check with him? Well, if you think we can get some money from him, call him. Mr. Sutter firmly believes in the vine-covered cottage, the family circle, easy slippers, smoking jackets, pipe of mouth, faithful dog. Hello, baby. Oh, hello, baby. Uh, <laughs> I'd uh, like you to rush a call through to Mount 80. Orrin J. Watford. You'll find him at the Ace High Snooker Palace. <laughs> I thought you was calling Mr. Sutter. Oh, I don't know, Mr. Sutter. Huh? Hello? Ace High Snooker Palace? Orin? Guess who this is? Gay. <laughs> <laughs> he, he thinks I'm Russell Fillmore. <laughs> Try again, Orin. Just tell him who you are and get hold of Mr. Sutter. <laughs> no. This is Ben Withers. Yes. Sure, I'll wait. What's the matter now, Ben? He wants to make another shot. <laughs> doesn't want to hold up the game. Oh, for pity's sakes. Nice fellow, Oren. <laughs> Wears his vest inside out to break himself of the cigar habit. <laughs> Hello, Oren. How's that? Side pocket, huh? <laughs> Dan, this, this is costing us money. Oren, I wonder if you'd run across the street to the bank and ask your millionaire brother-in-law... If he'll lend $350 to a needy friend of mine here in Pine Ridge. Do you have to say needy? You better make that seedy. How's that? <laughs> How's that, Orrin? Well, my stars, put him on. <laughs> what do you know about that, Lum? Ralph Conway is there. I don't <laughs> care who. Just find out about the money. Ralph wants to say hello to me. Ralph? Hello to you. <laughs> okay, Ralph. He's putting Orrin back on. <laughs> Ask about the money. That's the first time I've talked to Ralph in seven years. <laughs> sure good to hear his voice again. Hello? Who is this? Charlie? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Why, certainly, Charlie. I'd love to talk to him. Now, hold on, Ben. This has went too far. That Charlie thinks of everything. <laughs> Hello, sir. Happy birthday, sir. <laughs> Just a moment, sir. Here, Lum, you talk to him. Well, I don't know what to say to him. Just say happy birthday. Oh, Granny, this is silly. I can't... Hello, sir. Happy birthday, sir. I said happy birthday... Happy, I said, happy birthday. Here, Ben, take this receiver and get Orrin back on. How'd you like that fellow's voice, Lum? 
<laughs> you couldn't hardly hear him. Who was he? I don't know. <laughs> Some uh, fella hanging around the pool hall. Charlie said he's 93 years old today and has never talked long distance before. <laughs> this was Charlie's birthday present to him. <laughs> Charlie, who's paying for this call? Hello, who's this? Ed? Oh, me. Well, that's just fine, Ed. Say hello to Bessie and Clyde. <laughs> Goodbye. Well, you're in luck, Mom. In luck? Orrin told Ed to tell me... To I tell don't want to hear it. ...that he contacted Mr. Sutter over at the bank, and Mr. Sutter will be in Pine Ridge this afternoon to discuss the loan. He will? But I thought you... When did you find that out? Yes. Well, why didn't you tell me this before? How could I? You kept butting in on the conversation. <laughs> No, no, Abner, you ain't never gonna make no impress on Mr. Sutter that way. Here's all I want you to do. Look like a family man. Look happy. Well, make up your mind. I can't do both. <laughs> Abner, a family man is happy. When did that start? <laughs> Leastways, far as Mr. Sutter's concerned, there. Oh, him. Now, if you expect to get this loan for us, you've got to make him think you're a family man that's awful thoughty of his woman. Well, Lom, I'm thoughty, Elizabeth. Who was it that sat on the fence in a hot, boiling sun all one day learning her how to plow? Well, <laughs> yeah, that's nice. And but... me with a busting headache, too. Well, Anna, them ain't quite the things I mean. Well, how about me setting up of an evening reading a catalog to her while she half soles my shoes? Well, look, I've even stood out in a pouring down rainstorm and helped the ladder while Elizabeth patched the roof. <laughs> I ain't trying to criticize your domestic calmness, huh? but a man like Mr. Sutter has got different ideas on the subject. Now, look, we're going to have to have him take supper over at your place, and when he gets there, I want you to be sitting in that big rocking chair in the parlor with your easy slippers on, your dog, Old Blue, sitting at your feet, pipe in mouth. Old Blue can't smoke. <laughs> I don't mean him. Makes him sick, huh? <laughs> Better have your daughter Pearl kneel on down at one side of your chair. I doubt if them slippers will fit him either. <laughs> then I want you to have Elizabeth standing behind your chair with one hand on your shoulder and holding a pitcher of lemonade. And oh, no, no, stop right where you're at. I ain't gonna take a chance of her stand behind me with anything that heavy in her hand. <laughs> Look, if we expect to get enough money to stay in business... Wait a minute. Was that our ring? I don't know. I'll see. Hello. Jot them down, store Abner Peabody doing the talking. Who? Oh, my goodness. Is she hurt bad? Who's hurt? Elizabeth? Oh, this is terrible. I'll be right home. Lom, I've got to get over the place right away. Well, wait a minute. What happened well, to her? Well, I'll tell you later, Lom. Oh, that poor Elizabeth. What a time to have an accident. For a clumsy woman, she sure is awkward. <laughs> Oh, this is the terriblest thing. How did it happen? Well, you see, I Just was look at her laying there. Poor little varmint. Speak to me, honey. <laughs> Poor little rosebud. I dog is mister, you ought to been more careful where you's driving that dad blame truck. Oh, I couldn't help it. I'm driving along, minding my own business, not looking to right nor left, and all of a sudden here's this cow standing in the middle of the road gazing up at the bull Dorham sign. <laughs> <laughs> looking just like she's considering a trip to the Cas bar with him. <laughs> All right, Dogas, I'm a good mind to lawsuit you for this. Oh, no, no, you can't do that. I ain't responsible. Well, why ain't you? You was driving the truck. Yeah, but I ain't got no driver's license. <laughs> well, I guess you got me there. <laughs> Will you help me try to get her to the vet? Yeah, well, just a minute. First, I got to make out this accident report to the insurance company. Uh, uh, what's the name now? Rosebud. <laughs> Is uh, that your uh, first name or your last name? It's a cow's name. 
I don't believe she's got a first name or a last name either. Better just make it Rosebud Peabody. I <laughs> don't want the cow's name. I want yours. Well, I wasn't hurt. I never said you was. You're the owner of this cow, and if you expect to get any money out of this insurance claim, I got to send your name into the company, see? Well, send Rosebuds. It might make her feel better. <laughs> oh, look, all I ask is just one man's simple, straightforward name, and what do I get? <laughs> Granny's been. This is the worst one kettle of fish I've ever been in. Fine. It's been my, now two hours since I've heard from Abner. And I just got a call from Mr. Sutter that he's on his way over here. Well, there's no use in your talking to Mr. Sutter, Lum. He only does business with happy family men. Well, I ain't got time to raise a happy family now. <laughs> and Abner's woman's been hurt in some kind of an accident. No telling when he's going to be here. Oh, that's highly unfortunate. Is she hurt badly? I don't know. I ain't got none of the details yet. I just hope it ain't so serious that it'll keep her from cooking that supper for Mr. Sutter. If we don't get him over to Abner's house, we're sank. Fight. Granny, it looks like if it ain't half a dozen of one thing, it's six dozen of the same. How's that? Uh, excuse me, Ben. Hello, John him down store. Lum Eddard's talking. Uh, Lum, this is Abner. Oh, well, thank goodness. How is she, Abner? Is she hurt bad? I'm feared so. Oh, me. She broke her hind leg. Oh, Jane <laughs> Elizabeth broke her hind leg. This is the spot we suggest for the sponsor's commercial. Your message will be welcomed by millions of Lum and Abner fans from every city, town, hamlet, and crossroad throughout America. For over 17 years, these loyal friends have followed the daily lives of these two old codgers from the hill country. And Pine Ridge is perhaps as well known today as any city throughout the land. Lum and Abner have become a household name as truly American as baseball and ham and eggs. Their entertainment throughout the years has typified good clean, wholesome, down-to-earth American life. To the folks in small towns, it's a visit with old friends. To those in the city, it's a pleasant departure like going back home again. It's an era of American life that people who knew it don't want to forget, and people who didn't like to know. Isn't this the type of entertainment you would like your product associated with? Well, the listeners for nearly a decade have proven to be as loyal to their product as they are to Lum and Abner themselves. Well, Valmer K. Sutter, Mount Ida banker, has arrived in Pine Ridge to discuss lending family man Abner $350 to save the Jotham Down store. However, Abner has forgotten all about money as he watches over his injured cow out in the barn. Right now, he's trying to get the cow to go to sleep. Listen. Shh. As Alicia saw the flash in his eyes, she quickly proffered him a cigarette. But Preston brushed it aside, and with his hot breath blowing on her cheek, whispered hoarsely, I love you, darling. <laughs> That's exciting, ain't it, Rosebud? <laughs> I love you, darling. Do you understand? I love you. Mom. Huh? Oh, doggies. I never heard you come in, Cedric. Oh, Mr. Lum sent me over here to tell you. Be quiet, Cedric. Don't disturb Rosebud. I'm just now getting her quieted down. Oh, the cow, you mean. Yeah. <laughs> she just loves them stories in the ladies' home journal. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Mr. Lum told me about the accident that your woman... Say, what's the matter with Rosebud's leg? She broke it. Oh, must run in your family. <laughs> How's your wife? Oh, she's fine. I got her calm down after the accident. It's Rosebud I'm worried about. Well, where's Miss Peabody? In bed? In bed? Well, no, she's out chopping wood. Chopping wood? <laughs> with her leg? No, with a regular chopping axe. <laughs> I'll be doggone. 
She sure must knit fast. Yeah, she lent me a pair of socks once in less than a week. <laughs> I'm talking about the bones in her leg. No, no, she used regular knitting needles. <laughs> Of course, now, since you mention it with her knees, I'll be she couldn't hit a pair of socks on. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, say, M- Mr. Lum told me to tell you that there's a uh, Mr. Sutter over at the Jot 'em Down store waiting for you. Sutter? Oh, my goodness alive, I plumb forgot about him. Oh, for the land sakes. Rosebud woke up again. Here, Cedric, take this and start in right there. Yes, ma'am. Right there. Oh. And I'll see you later, Cedric. Um... Uh... Preston brushed it aside and with his hot breath blowing on her cheek, whispered hoarsely, I love you, darling. Well, now, just take it easy, Mr. Sutter. I'm sure Abner will be here any minute. I'm afraid I can't waste any more time, Mr. Edwards. Time is money, you know. It is. Granny's no wonder we're broke. I've been sleeping up about $100 worth every night. (laughs) I'll give him five more minutes to get here. Well, Mr. Sutter, the thing that's holding him up is because he's such a devoted family man. Oh? See, his woman was in an accident today, and poor Abner, being such a family man, is all tore up over it. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, you've never seen such a family man. I just wish this accident hadn't happened so you could have saw him and his little family grope together in the parlor. <laughs> it's a sight that'll warm the crockery of your heart. <laughs> hmm. I'd like to hear more about that, Mr. Edwards. Well, sir... You can walk into their little rose-covered bird nest or love nest any time of the day or night, and you'll find Abner sitting amongst his beloved family circle. Ah, uh, that's the sort of thing I like to hear about a man. Yeah, every night he sits there in his easy slippers, his good wife standing behind him, his curly-headed little daughter kneeling at his feet, gazing up at him with them watery blue eyes. Ah, <laughs> uh, how old is the little one? Going on 19. <laughs> Months? Years. <laughs> oh, I tell you, Mr. Sutter, I wish you could see Abner sitting there with his faithful old dog sprawled at his feet, pipe in mouth. Uh, uh does the dog smoke? <laughs> no. They, they claim he's part Sam Bernard. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry I'm not going to get to meet Mr. Peabody. I'm afraid I'm going to have to go. Well, I'm sure that he... I granny, there comes a little varmint, er, Mr. Peabody now. Well, come on in, Abner, old boy. I know what a blow this has been to you, being such a family man and all. Ah. Uh-huh. How's she getting along? Oh, she's out in the barn bellering her head off. <laughs> the barn? Oh, uh, Abner, uh, th- this is Mr. Sutter, the banker from Mount Ida. Oh, well, how do you do, you do? Uh, uh, how do you do? Uh, I'm sorry to hear about your misfortune. I hope she's resting well. Oh, she's doing all right. Might learn her lesson. <laughs> I know she's going to get hit one of these days the way she gads around the neighborhood. <laughs> uh, gads around? Oh, the worst you've ever seen. Why, I've even saw her lay right down in the middle of the road and make cars drive around her. (laughs) What did you say? Well, it's my own fault, I reckon, for not pinning her up. Quick as she gets well, I'm going to hobble her. (laughs) You better not let her hear you talking like that about her. Ah, She's so dumb, she wouldn't understand me, she heard me. (laughs) What's this? Uh, Mr. Sutter, Abner's just upset over this accident. He he don't know what he's saying. Yes, well, perhaps this is not the time to discuss business. Oh, no, no, that's what I come over here for. How about the cash? Well, uh, I haven't had much opportunity to look over your business establishment here, but from what I've seen, I must say it looks a little uh, run down. Oh, well, that's just because Abner spends so much of his time at home with that charming little family of his. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Me and my dog, Old Blue, sat there in a parlor all day long. Me and my rocking chair and my stocking feet. Stocking feet? Yeah. Did you say Old Blue was wearing my slippers? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, we're a happy, happy household. Even Mark Canary's happy. Just last week he split his beak smiling. 
Abner, don't overdo it. One of our hogs died laughing. Abner. <laughs> You're just going to love taking supper with us, Mr. Sutter. We're having pork chops. Why, I wouldn't think of imposing on Mrs. Peabody at a time like this. Well, why not? Well, a woman in her condition... If... Oh, well, you can't go by that. Looks ain't everything. No. Uh, <laughs> but you couldn't ask a woman to cook a meal so soon after an accident like that. Well, she did try to get out of it, but I told her you was coming for supper and she'd better get herself out in that kitchen. But after all, a broken leg. Oh, well, that's been took care of. The veterinary slapped a splint on it. Veterinary? For goodness sakes, didn't you call a regular doctor? For her? Why, of course not. They wouldn't work on her lung. And I don't blame him as wild as she is. Wild? Oh, when she gets hurt, it ain't safe to be around her. Why, she'll bore her neck and run you right off the place. And kick. Huh? Well, Mr. Peabody, you certainly don't mean that. Oh, well, don't worry. I've got her locked up in the barn now. Locked up in the barn? Well, that's the best place for her in her condition. Well, wouldn't she rather be with the family at a time like this? Well, I thought about that. But now, as clumsy as she is, she'd break everything in the house. <laughs> when she gets a little better, I'll turn her out in the lot. She just loves to romp with them mules. Mr. Peabody... As far as I'm concerned, we can consider this business discussion closed. Well, now, wait a minute, Mr. Sutter. Mr. Peabody don't mean nothing he said. Did I say something wrong? Abner, <laughs> does Elizabeth ever lay down in the middle of the road? Elizabeth? Not that I know of, no. Did you ever hobble her? Uh, no. <laughs> did, did you ever lock her up in the barn? Uh... Well, one time when we was first married... Do you love and admire her? Oh, yeah, I love her just like she's one of my own family. Now, <laughs> now you see there, Mr. Sutter? Now, how about the loan? Well, if we do grant a loan, it'll have to be just a short-term one. Well, that's all right. Just so as we get our hands on the cash. No, I'll have to look over the books first. Go right ahead, sir. And maybe you can get them to balance. We can't. <laughs> One look at our books will prove to you that we need that $350 pretty bad. Oh, well, if that's all you want, I think perhaps I could take care of it. Well, good for you. Hey, Abner, got good news for you. Uh huh? The veterinarian says her leg's gonna heal all right. Oh, hooray! I dog it, I won't have to shoot her. <laughs> shoot her! Abner, sitch, talk. You know good and well you'd never do a thing like that. I never aimed on doing it myself. I couldn't bring myself to do it long, not after I've had her around the place so long. Well, this is the last well, stop. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Sutton. I've heard all I can stand. Hey, Peabody, I turned in that insurance report on your accident. Oh, well, I believe the old cow's going to get well now. Old cow! This is the end. Uh, Mr. Sutter, come back. In all my life, I've never heard a word... My grannies, now we're ruined. We've lost everything. We're done for. Is something wrong? <laughs> now, look, Peabody, you just signed this claim You here. get out of here. Can't you see we're going bankrupted? Look, Grandpa, if I don't get this insurance claim signed, I can't give Peabody this 350 bucks for breaking his old cow's leg. 350 bucks? Cow's leg? I thought it was Elizabeth. Nah, name is Rosebud. Wait a minute. You mean that Abner gets 300... I grannies we're in business again. Oh, uh, Abner, I also have a message for you from Mrs. Peabody. She said in regard to that supper tonight... Oh, I plum forgot about that. Here she's baked up everything in the place, and now Sutter's left. If I don't bring somebody home, she'll... Hey, you. Uh, who, who, me? Yeah, how'd you like to take supper with us tonight? Well, uh... I ain't got me pinstripe succeed but uh, leave us go. Oh, well, wait a minute. Let me finish Mrs. Peabody's message. She said, don't bring anybody home. The supper is off. Huh? She stumbled over that dog of yours in the parlor, and she thinks she's broke her leg. <laughs> give you an idea of the kind of trouble Lum and Abner seem to have a special knack for getting themselves into. And this sort of thing goes on all the time. For example, there was the time that Lum took up piano tuning and restrung the church piano with bailing wire. 
A lot of the time, he and Abner promoted an oil well in Pine Ridge and drilled right into a transcontinental pipeline. A lot of the time, Lum appointed himself postmaster, and a postal inspector was sent out to investigate him, and... Well, here, let's peek in on that scene for just a second. Lum and Abner are in the post office, completely unaware that Mr. Burton, the postal inspector, is about to enter their door. Listen. There, Abner, how do you like that sign? Yeah, let's see it, uh... All clearance sale. All postage stamps drastically reduced to half price. I don't know why our old postmaster never thought of this. Hey, Lom, who's that stranger coming up out there? I don't know. Whoever he is, I bound you ain't never seen a post office run like I'm running this one. <laughs> Well, come on in, mister. How do you do? My name is Burton, and I was sent here to investigate... Don't matter why you're here. Just consider yourself lucky, because you're just in time for the big stamp sale. Stamp uh, sale? Yeah, see the sign? Three centers, two cents. Two centers, one cent. <laughs> Great Scott, who's responsible for this? Well, <laughs> I don't like to brag on myself, but I'm your man. Hmm. Well, you may be right. Do you know anything at all about the postal regulations? Oh, them old moldy wore out things. I'm making up a whole new set. <laughs> oh, you are, eh? Yeah, you might say I'm revoluting the whole postal system. Yeah. He's the most revolting postmaster this town's ever had. <laughs> show is written by Roz Rogers and Betty Boyle and produced by Glenn Hall Taylor. The music was directed by Felix Mills. This is Charles Lyon. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. (laughs) 